Welcome to the Nurse's Notes. This is Nurse Kevin, and I'm going to talk to you about cardiac tamponade. In basic anatomy, the heart is pumping fine, and we have normal hemodynamics. The blood is coming in through the superior vena cava, then exits out the aorta. But we have a bat. No, not that kind of bat, this kind. And this may cause external trauma or injury to the chest. Also, this external trauma may be caused by a motor vehicle accident, a seat belt, or blunt trauma. And this causes tamponade or fluid around the heart. Tamponade, fluid around the heart. P for pericardium, where the fluid is. This fluid may also be caused by an invasive procedure from a myocardial infarction or a bypass, or pericardiocentesis, where the needle is put into the pericardium and fluid is drawn away from the heart. Or the patient has a pericardial window that is put into place after a myocardial infarction to handle the fluid. The nurse monitors this outgoing fluid from the pericardium into a drain, and you monitor that drain for kinks or clots. So let's review the causes of cardiac tamponade. We have internal causes like a myocardial infarction, where there may be an invasive catheter or pericardiocentesis with needle aspirations, or an actual cut is in the pericardium called a pericardial window. Including, we have external causes like a motor vehicle accident, chest trauma, like flail chest or external blunt trauma, all of which can cause fluid around the heart or a cardiac tamponade. So, what does the patient look like? Well, this all depends on the cause of the tamponade, but they all result in fluid around the heart. Since normally blood comes in and blood comes out, but with tamponade, this doesn't happen, and the result is cardiac output gets decreased. And how do we remember cardiac output? Well, we start with the letter CO, and we put a little O then on top of the other O. We think of the half, and half of 8 is 4. So the normal cardiac output is 4 to 8. And in cardiac tamponade, this is decreased. So... Cardiac output less than 4, they should be monitored, and as the fluid builds up, it will build up where? Peripherally. So we have a CVP of central venous pressure, or I like to say, see the volume peripherally. And this is also 4 to 8, like cardiac output. But that volume will be elevated. So let's review hemodynamics. Cardiac output less than 4, central venous pressure greater than 8. But wait, I don't have hemodynamics. That's okay, nurse. Assess. Assess your patient. We have a decreased cardiac output less than 4. Then skin is cool and clammy. And they have shortness of breath lying down. With the decreased cardiac output less than 4, the heart tries to compensate with tachycardia or a heart rate greater than 100. But this only works for so long as the blood pressure will drop and the mean arterial pressure will be less than 60. And not only that, but specifically we have low systolic blood pressure called pulsus paradoxus, with a systolic change of greater than 10 with each inspiration. And remember, CVP greater than 8? Well, that shows up as distending neck veins or jugular vein distension. So assess. But what does it sound like? Well, we use our ears. No, not those ears. Our nursing ears. And we hear distant or muffled heart sounds. So let's review. In cardiac tamponade, if we have hemodynamics, we have a CVP elevated greater than 8 or a cardiac output less than 4. Otherwise, we always assess our patients. They may have a decreased blood pressure, decreased heart sounds, distended jugular veins with a systolic difference of greater than 10 on inspiration. We have shortness of breath lying supine, and we have an increased heart rate and cool and clammy skin. Oh yeah, and don't forget the cardiac tamponade in the 3Ds of Beck's triad, which are decreased blood pressure, decreased heart sounds, and distended jugular veins. So what are we monitoring and preventing? Cardiogenic shock. We monitor these symptoms that could be worsening cardiogenic shock, but what kind? Obstructive. Remember the blood flow can't get in or out. So what is the plan? Well, we assess vital signs every two to four hours. We recognize changes of cardiogenic shock. We monitor vital signs of patients with these potential histories like trauma or uh, myocardial infarction. But ultimately, we protect the patient from cardiogenic shock. 
Is there anything else? Well, if a patient has a procedure like pericardial window, we monitor for that drain for decreased drainage or stops, and then we check the lines for kinks or clots. What if they're on a ventilator? Well, we decrease the PEEP. And we always call the doctor if we suspect cardiac tamponade. Because if it's cardiogenic shock, they might order some medications, like dopamine or dobutamine, to help with the fluid and to pump the heart. Dobutamine, B, 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 and dopamine, P, for pericardium, where the fluid is. So, what are some common NCLEX traps? Well, missing the three Ds of X triad, decreased blood pressure, decreased heart sounds, distended jugular veins, not knowing your hemodynamic ranges, like CVP 4 to 8, and it would be elevated with cardiac tamponade, or cardiac output 4 to 8 would be uh, decreased with cardiac tamponade. Not knowing what might be ordered, like do dopamine or dobutamine. Just not recognizing that the patient's history would put that patient at risk for cardiac tamponade. I am Kevin with the Nurses Notes. We are mastering the NCLEX in nursing one note at a time. Please go to our site where we provide over 300 NCLEX questions free and follow us on Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Once again, I'm Kevin with Nurse Camp. See you next time.